you can to being asked please the two dimensions of spiritual journey one is the outer and other is the inner the outer journey is what we call as low and inner journey is called consciousness and finally these two are one consciousness and the outer journey outer world we see the world and inside we see consciousness so what we see as the world which is washed world is called brahman and what we see as consciousness is called atman atman and brahman are one so journey involves seeing one in all one in all we call as bhakti or devotion most of the people will start with that to see god first we see god in the temple then we see god in the serving people serving serving the society or serving service we see god then gradually we will be able to see god in all all means everything material non material living non living so that we can we call it as bhakti or devotion it's called love so there is a feeling in that love i am connected to the whole and gradually i am the totality so i am all and inner journey involves finding out who am i and we come to understanding that i am consciousness and consciousness is transcending reality so once i realize transcending reality all in one everything appear from that one so that is called transcendence it's called advaita so advaita is non duality and that speaks and outer journey is what we call as uh, bhakti devotion and devotion is love and peace love and peace is what we look for in life totality so now the question here is asked by uh, asked please does it take time how long how does it happen so in reality there is no time because the concept of time is a mental creation so whatever concept of time we have is not real it's a illusion so now that if you are able to get out of the illusion transcendence through clarity through atma vichara then it's always here and now it's not tomorrow the realization is always here and now okay uh, you are already it is whatever whatever you are seeking one in all all in one is now and here but of course there is a challenge challenge is our own belief systems our own uh, uh, what are, what are called impressions which are blocking our vision of that one in all and all in one okay it is not a process of gaining something it is a process of getting rid of something so get, what, what i call as unlearning or dropping something dropping our wrong belief systems and uh, getting rid of some of our vasanas impressions but always realization is here and now it's not in future not in time but the process involves some amount of cleaning up what you call vasanas and samskaras and also false belief systems the false belief systems can be dropped through atma vichara shravana mana vidyasa and vasanas and samskaras can be dropped through service seva so what we call as atma mokshartham jagaditaya should become a way of life now is there a concept of, is there a time involved in this Uh, from our present day consciousness present level of consciousness we can speak of time but in a absolute reality point of view there's no time it's always here and now so it's like uh, giving an example somebody is dreaming in the dream he gets he, get, he is born he gets up he marries he has a job he has children it's a long time 
now the question dream character asks how much time when will i get when i when can i wake up the answer is you can wake up any time because dream to waking up is a sudden jump not a transition but for the dream character dream appears to be real so he has to make a journey there as long as you are in the dream world or maya world there appears to be journey but in reality there is no journey reality is a jump a wake up okay so now I, if i want to answer your question from the journey point of view the journey is it takes many lifetimes it's not one lifetime because to get a mental maturity it is several lifetimes which come which which you go through so finally you come to a jnana okay until you come to a maturity it is many lifetimes this unconscious journey so unconscious journey is you are exploring without a proper understanding of life so that unconscious journey can take us many many lifetimes hundreds or thousands or millions also unconsciously but some point of time we come to a conscious journey so conscious journey is where oh, we are realized consciously yes there is some higher truth i can realize it so that is a conscious journey the moment you come to a conscious journey the unconscious journey which is long starts coming to an end now it's a jump through proper jnana now it's no longer linear it's jump so when you jump you understand the teachings of vedanta tattvamasi you understand the uh, reality because jnana is like a jump it's not like a transition is not like a journey right so that's why dana vi dadd karmani dana is like a fire it will burn it is not a what we call as a journey so now with dana you can make a jump but what blocks is still some of our unconscious belief systems or our vasanas so that way atma mokshatam jagat tai has to go together so if i if you ask a question how long it will take there is no a standard answer for you be because it depends on each person's where they are each person where they are what is their backlog of vasanas and samskara which is there right there is no a single standard answer is there a way of knowing where when can i make a jump there is no exact time frame also can be specified but what, there are some indicators indicators are compared to what i am day, a few days back or few years back today have i become better better not in the sense of uh, qualities have i become more emotionally stable raga dvesha kama krodha mada matsara moha loba what causes mental disturbance that impact on my life has come down gradually right have i become more equanimous equanimity has developed in my life so this is the question you only can answer nobody else can answer so ultimately the spirituality or enlightenment is attaining perfect equanimity that's why the enlightenment concept what we call enlightenment what shri krishna says in bhagavad gita dukeshu anudigmanah sukeshu vegata spraha vita raga bhaya krodha sthitadi munruchate not getting disturbed when this is depressing when the situations are not favorable or not getting elated when the situations are not uh kandu uh, uh kandusu raga bhay raga raga dvesha attraction repulsion i go become free bhaya krodaha fear and anxiety comes down so then a person is enlightened jivan mukta so now earlier we speak of love one in all and other thing we spoke of peace all in one right finally it translates to perfect equanimity in life 
So if you want to R, if you want to put one word, equanimity is equal to peace and love. So equanimity is what you can see in your life. So don't have to crave for some uh, oneness, some, I uh, mean, don't have to crave for any experience because experience are all temporary. Finally, am I becoming more and more equanimous? The equanimity is developing in my life is what you have to observe. So now the answer is when, when it will happen? No, it will happen. So, it will happen. So it will so happen. This thing, you won't even know it has happened. It is not like a, one day some attack, something will happen. No, it will happen if you are in the process of Nana, Atmana Mokshatam Jagaditaya. One day you find, suddenly you find that, oh my God, this is all it is. So don't look for a time. Look for whether you are developing more and more equanimity in life. Right? That's the key. Thank you, Guruji. That really makes sense. And that is what I was going to say that over time I've seen that uh, things have changed in me. But like how uh, Vijayji was saying that uh, like uh, when he sees Subhugaru being 